Good morning. I'm David Veach, and this is Elevate Your Performance. Again, remote from Baltimore, uh, where I'm taking care of the grandkids. So, a little shorter one today. I wanted to talk about the scientific method in the context of this problem-solving stuff that I've kind of teed up the past couple of days. Um, what makes something a scientific method is, is a logical approach to analyzing this. Okay, so it requires that we have direct observation and measurement, so it can't just be some reasoning. Uh, it requires the formulation of this like basic question. Uh, why is something happening? What is something doing? Uh, and then developing um, a hypothesis, which is just a, a, a question about what you think is likely to happen if something else happens. Um, we develop this hypothesis um, and then we test that hypothesis. So um, to make something a scientific method piece and to make scientific method problem solving work, it requires you to think through what might happen and then test to see if that in fact does happen. So you can either learn that your hypothesis holds what you assumed actually happened or you prove that your assumption was wrong. Uh, and that's where we run into trouble. A lot of people want to confirm that their assumptions are right. And so they'll manipulate data and do things like that. So to take all that stuff out of problem solving, we've got to be able to control that with the process that we decide to follow. Uh, I'm gonna be talking a lot more about this, particularly as it relates to countermeasures and how we propose a solution and how we evaluate the solution to see which one is actually gonna be most effective. So we're trying to build some creativity and some real skill in problem solving by keeping it based in the scientific method. That's it for today. Um, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.